very much. Uh, we don't have a theme picked for today. And so I think it would be great for us to, you know, throw it out there who has any questions or who has anything that they would like to kick us off with or start with. Um, I'm just setting things up on my side. Do, 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 do. Fantastic. Go for it, Daniel. And you are muted, just so you know. Yeah. So um, I'm building my my um, EMC. The I, I forgot the name. Uh, expiring the, mini course. Uh, expiring mini course. So um, I have the order form for free, and then at the end of the three videos, how do I do to give them? like my offer, my membership offer, and and take them to another order form where they have to pay. Sure. Okay. Thank I you. Will, no worries. Give me one second. I will load up my um, my account here to show you. Do, 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 do. So let's, I'll share my screen here. Okay, just confirm you can see my screen, we're all good. Okay, excellent. And so I'm going to uh, use this course right here, expiring mini course April 24th is the example. And what you're saying is that you've come into the course, you've added all of your content, correct? So you've created your videos, you've created your actions, et cetera right what did i guess my first question is what did you for the last training for the third training what did you put as your final action no i haven't i haven't set up that that's what i want to to understand uh so so that i can offer the membership okay um so we have to get them there. Would you be willing to tell everybody like what's your expiring mini course about? Like what's the theme? Yeah, uh, for sure. So it's hack your vision to improve your eyesight naturally. So we have the, um, the root cause of vision problems, the real root cause, and then how lifestyle and epigenetics uh, play a, a deal game changing in your eyesight and then mm -hmm. how the self-hacking methods can uh, help you improve your eyesight naturally uh, without any invasive procedures so i want to take them to the membership uh so it's a sure okay never-ending membership <laughs> and so or, your first what yeah <laughs> sorry so your first um your first video is talking about the problem about poor eyesight, why poor eyesight happens. The second one is your it's sort of explaining uh, natural options, non-invasive, non-surgical options for improving vision. And then the th the third video, do you have like, uh, are, are you recapping those things or like what's the third video say? Yeah, like okay. every video is recapping everything like from the last the previews and I'm giving exercises and I'm um, like positioning the self-hacking method. So for some people can be one month, for some people can be three months, six months, one year, depending on your mindset, emotional work and um, the lifestyle prescriptions you have to gain and ch habit change. So this is a membership to a company who okay. uh, will mm -hmm. do their job. And okay, fantastic. I totally, I, totally, mm -hmm. I totally get it. Fantastic. Yeah. So I'm just going to pop out here. So the just to bring us up to speed, so we're back in Experientify on your screen there. And you have training number one, which is your problem. Training number two is, you know, your your knowledge, right? The, the knowledge drop that you have around that. And then training number three is a recap. And and what we 
what we like to say, and as Brenda would explain in our quick start course, this is the, you know, the come take a next step with me, right? This is the next step offer. So there's a couple of things that we want to do. First, in our tr third training, we want to have one of the actions be be literally for to say, you know, come take a next step with me. And so this would be my recommendation is that, um, uh, what's the what's what word I'm for? Um, I, when you're going to change this action, right? The first action is, hey, did you watch that video? And they click yes, and they get some points. And then the the second action is literally to, you know, come take a next step with me, something like that, you know, hey, come join my membership, come, uh, you know, start your journey today, you know, start your journey to better eyesight today. And then you want to put something, you know, in, in the action notes as well, where it's like, you know, hey, hey, I've just recapped everything that we talked about in the first two lessons. And now it's your, now, now's your time to take action. And when they do that, and then you can put in here, when you do that, you'll, you know, I will reveal how to take that next step. Okay. So let's tease them like that. And then um, because we're in that third training and there's only three trainings, when they click that last step, it will mark their learner account uh, as the course has been completed. Right. That's, that's an important thing. Um, and the reason why that's important is because um, when we go to your course pages, uh, I'm going to go to the single training page just simply because that is where they will be, right? When they when they, that's where they will be when um, they click on that second action there. And what will happen is that this uh, will then be revealed. So if we look in the edit content section, um, you see how it has um, it says that it to show it always, but it says anybody who now has this tag show this to them, right? So when they complete your uh, that that second action button, this this will now become available and visible, and this is where you would put um, uh, you would you would rename you know you would obviously change the text here. You say hey you know now come join my membership or you know start your journey to better eyesight or whatever. And when they click on this button, um, sorry I'm going to just go down to on the left hand side in the column. Right. This is where we have the text for the headline, et cetera, et cetera. And then the button is right here. You can have the button go to an internal page. Right. And so this could be, uh, you know, another course, a different course, other page, you know, other things like that. And so this is where you first you have to have your other pay, your other course built and published or it won't be available. And then you would just you that button would take them to the order page for your next course. It's really that simple. So it will take them to the offer page, right? Correct. The, the, yeah, the, the offer, offer the order page. form. The order form. Okay. Yeah, we okay. call it, yeah we call it the order form, but yeah, um, it will look. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It will it will be one of these, right? Mm -hmm. But it won't say expiring mini course. It'll be however you design it for mm -hmm. your course, and then they will have to then obviously enroll in that course because you're not enrolling them you're just sending them to the offer page if you wanted to automatically enroll them then you would send them to the home page and you would do other things but this is how you this is how you make that offer and bring them into a, into your membership okay and and one next question will be um so the membership uh if i have a an evergreen um and I have a membership with like a, a first steps and then meetings every week. So how does that work with this membership uh, that we have? Like we have one part evergreen and then weekly calls uh, for the people who are joining the membership. Sure. So there's a, a, there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. Um, we have this here. I'm going to go back to our so i'm going to go all the way back to our my courses um did it did it did it do so this is what we worked on in the last office hours the the challenge and the evergreen challenge right if you want to you by definition you can't have an evergreen course where you're going to have live um 
uh, Zoom calls or, you know, or, you know, content because evergreen by definition means that it, it stays the same and then, you know, anybody can enter into it and it just, you know, it will always be there. There, we can twist that a little bit in that you could create something as we, we explained last time where you're bringing people into a cohort, they're going through the course and when they're done that you put them into the evergreen part and you could add content to that over time, right? Cause you're just adding new people. Um, and so this is, th th I, that's, that's kind of how I would do it just for this one. I would, I would create your membership. Um, like, 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 let's think of a scenario. Let's just say, okay, I do your EMC. I come over to your membership and I sign up. What's the evergreen part that I get first? Is it, um, it, are, are you basically taking people, everybody needs to go through kind of like two or three levels to kind of get the basics. And then it's, okay, cool. That that, that seems like a fairly simple thing. Um, so what I would do is I would create something like a challenge or, you know, just a gamified course where it's like, look, this is, you're, welcome to the membership. Here's the five, seven, 10, whatever it is, basic lessons that you need. And then when they when they successfully complete those, the same thing that we talked about last time. At the very end, when they complete it, you say, congratulations, you've completed the basics. Now you're going to be taken to the VIP area where you're going to, you know, where I'm going to have, you know, we have weekly calls, or we have monthly calls and, you know, there's, there's replays and stuff like that. So it's that, it's kind of funny. It's actually set up in the account they are looking at right now, exactly as the order would be, right? People would go through the mini course first. Then the mini course leads to your, your basic off, your basic offer. And, you know, if you really wanted to as well, I could almost, I would almost recommend to you that your experiment mini course is free. Your basic course is, you know, it's a one-time kind of, hey, here's some, here, let me give you the basics for a hundred dollars or something, you know, so some low level. And then the membership, you make, you know, that, that, and then you make that like sort of, you know, the, the $50 a month or whatever it is. And you're doing what's called laddering right? You're, you're having them, you, they go on the first rung and then they're like, oh, hey, this is, he's really got some great stuff. Yeah. I'm going to then buy the membership and that's how you, you keep laddering them up. And then, you know, you could obviously sell individual coaching or whatever from your, through your membership. So it's a great way to, I'm glad that we have this recorded. That's, that's a really great example. Does that make sense? Uh, I just want to, I kind of explained it all very fast there. It makes sense and, and and it's what what I'm building because then I want to get them to one on one or retreats. So mm -hmm. um that's that's kind of the thing because this is a, a long lasting like we have to make habit changes, lifestyle changes to to have these improvements. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's something that people need to have like a community and have also uh, see others have achievements and gain confidence because it's not something we've been told. <laughs> Fantastic. Love it. Um, let's, let's wrap, let's tie that in a bow for now. Like, that seems like we have a pretty good explanation about going from mini course to, if you want to mini course to your basic evergreen, that's, you know, that content very rarely if ever changes. And then you're, you know, you're making a final offer to come to be a part of the, like the VIP membership. Cool. Love it. I'm excited to see this thing. And is it possible to have like a, an app sale after they sign up for the mini course in this platform? We or... do not have what are called triggers, right? Or or tripwires, I apologize. Tripwires. Um, and that's the you would see that in some other platforms like Kartra and I don't know if a Kajabi has them or not, but I, in English, tripwire, you know, it's like you're you're going through the order process and you you because you put, added something to your cart, you know, that that tells our system to we have bumps. So we have the ability to Are you familiar with what an order bump is? I am. Yeah. Okay. So we have the ability to do that with some CSS, but right now we don't have tripwires where you know if somebody you know comes and joins your your experience mini course you could you could kind of put an offer you know like before they start the training or something is that is that what you want to do yeah so um what if um after they sign up for this can i have like a, an external page they can go in a thank you page or something that they 100%. can 
Well, what I would recommend that you do is you would just um, like in your expiring mini course after they um, after they sign up for the mini course, um, you have a couple things. You could have a celebration that you create that says, hey, go check your email for a special offer. Right. And it could just have your face and just be like, hey, go check your email right now. You know, and that way they're like, wait a second. No, that, that, that's interesting. And then, you know, you would put an email in that very this very first experience that is, you know, is more than just a welcome email. It says, hey, you know, you've you've signed up. Welcome to the expiring mini course. If you want, there's also this special bonus you could get, but it's only available for the next 24 hours or something like that. Right. So I would just put it in there and then use that as your opportunity. That's really something interesting. I, 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 that may be, uh, I, I think I kind of just stumbled onto something we maybe should do for office hours in the future is what's what are ways that we can creatively use celebrations? Because most people are just thinking about the dopamine hit, but there are also opportunities to say, you know, to, to, call, to have a call to action or, you know, um, you can use them in other ways that would benefit your course or benefit your business or whatever. And then um, that could be a cool training. So there's no way I can, uh, after the celebration, just take them to uh, another page, like a thank you page after that, just by the email? Yeah, not really. But like once when they sign up for the course, they're automatically going to go to the home page. That's just that that's just the the trigger that happens, right? That's the way that the system works. You could put the bonus offer on the home page and have that expire, right? So you could create an experience where they go to the home page. And under your welcome, you, you know, you'd have a section there that just says, Hey, here's a this is a 24 hour bonus offer. It's only available now. And then you create an experience that says, look, listen to the user when you know after 24 hours, like put a tag on the user, listen for 24 hours, and then after 24 hours, remove that tag, and then that section will disappear and then they won't they won't be available to them. Does that make sense? Look at that. I even got the I even got the <laughs> right on. Cool. Awesome. Nice. Well, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to tie this one up because I want to make sure we get Hannah's questions as well. I know. Over to you. Last time we talked about, I know you sent an email about this as well. I'm not sure where we're at in right. that conversation. I, but... I actually have a couple of other things if I can. So in my welcome email, um, can, can I share? This is going to be a real quick one. No worries. Absolutely. Let's see, where are we? Okay, so in my welcome email here, I expected this to be a link. And it's not a link in the emails and uh, my test students have been telling me. So how do I make this a link to the train, the first training? I know how to do that in Word and every place else, but I haven't figured it out here. It's really I apologize, Hannah. I was told, I was, I was, unfortunately totally distracted when you asked so you're saying in the welcome email where, where do you where do you want to do it so can you see my welcome email now yes absolutely okay mm -hmm. great so this thing right here mm -hmm. click here doesn't go it's not a link to the first training okay and so i'm i'm trying to figure out how to put a link to the first training in this text right here 100 percent. okay um and you're sure that it's not a link if you, you've tested it and, and when you get the email? I, I had two test students test it and I tested it. I signed myself also up as a test student. It does down on this one down here. It, you know, there this one here is a link that uh -huh. goes to the first uh, lesson, but this one here is not. Okay. Um. Well, if the, if the second one is, you could you could copy and paste the first one up there. Right. Or sorry, okay, just, great. You could just do that. But okay. let's 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 think like, hey, what if I wanted to create a link from scratch, right? Right. So you and Mike, could you stop you stop sharing your screen and we can um yes. Okay, cool. I will share mine then. And let's go into an experience. Again, I'm just in my expiring mini course demo that I'm doing here. I'm moving some zoom tools out of the way. And we're going to go down to the experience because this is where you're seeing that email. Like this is that first email, right? Now, yes. usually this email should be, um, sorry, my brain just completely uh, it just shut off there. 
you, it, when you when you use the expiring course um, uh, expiring mini course template, these um, emails are created automatically for you as a as as a great start, and the links are already there, right? But if you wanted to, uh, you know, to highlight it and change it, um, you know, you can use. I'm going to unlink this and let, let's see. Like, now let's put a. Doo -doo -doo. What I want to do now is I want to put a, a link there. Darn it! There we go. Ding. So we highlight it and then we link it and then we go down to um, we we find what we want. So usually you want to find a magic link. And that magic link will is the magic link for the student, right? Does that make sense? And so when they click on that, when they click on that, it's going to take them to their Experienceify account, and it will, you know, they will be asked to, um, if they're not already logged in. I mean, actually, wait, sorry, the magic link automatically logs them in, and it will be they will be taken to the course. And so just to back up there, I'm going to unlink that, right? And, or let's just let's like, let's let's link this piece of text rather than the other one so we can see it. So I'm going to highlight it. And when you highlight it, you'll see that you can do some markup like bold or italic, or whatever, but there's also the link button here. This little thing, looks like a chain. Mm -hmm. When you click on that, you have the ability to put a link in here. And so you see that there's tokens that you can use, but you can link it to uh, the magic link right here. And so by clicking on that, we've now created that. And in, in the email, it will be linked to the, the magic link that the student needs in order to go into the course automatically. So it will automatically link this to the first training? It should, yeah. Well, it'll, oh. it will link them to, because this is the first email they're getting as soon as they've signed into the, um, uh, as soon as they've signed into the course, right? Mm-hmm. What this will do is it will take them to the course and then the course will know where what progress okay. they have made. So if they have not done like your pre-actions on your homepage, it'll take them to the pre-actions on the homepage. Okay. And then okay. they will be invited, obviously, at the lower in the homepage, it will, they'll be invited to that first. Um, okay. Let's just look at a different example uh, because... Um, this is a this is an email that uh, says, "Hey, look, lesson number two has dropped. Right, training number two has dropped." And so the same thing here, you see that there's a training ma ma um, a training magic link here, mm -hmm. and so that takes it to takes the learner directly to that the that lesson that um in that partic in particular because it's saying bypass the homepage, bypass the 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 first lesson and. and in this case, we want to have it go lesson two, right? And so there's some, there's a little bit of, you can see that we have okay. the training slug there. Da -da 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 -da. Does that make sense, Hannah? Yes, that makes sense, which actually brings me, that's great, thank you. It, br mm -hmm. it brings me to my next question and you don't have to answer that. I can always uh, email Gabriel, I'm sure. So what my test two test students have told me, they got an email that lesson two dropped, but they okay. didn't get an email that lesson three dropped. And two of them couldn't figure out how to get to lesson three. Um, so I wanted to create an, a, an additional email to let them know that lesson three has dropped. And how would I do that? I know I have to click on... Um, add an experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know which triggers to put in there. I mean, I can write the email. Sure. Um, and so what you would do is let's let's just let's just say that we want to create an experience that says lesson three is now available. Yes. So we're going to create a new experience. I always forget this, but I'm going to look at the library first. And um man. no it's from scratch like why is it from scratch it's not in our it's not in our playbook xp's earned welcome back student rescue completion no so our playbook that's not so let's just go from we're going to let's we're going to create one from scratch okay 
when we create from scratch, the first thing that we're going to do is we have to select the trigger. So we have to select the thing that happens or the, the action the student is taking or has taken that starts this experience, right? right. So in this case, um, sorry, I got to move some Zoom tools again. Um, in this case, we could say a training is released. Sorry, I'm going to zoom in here so you can see it. We would say training is released. Right. So, and you'll, you, in your expiring mini course, you remember that training number three will be released on day three, no matter what. It will be released on, you know, hour 48 uh, and one second. Right. So, as soon as our system releases that training and it becomes available, mm -hmm. um, we will say, okay, select training number three. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you say that the, we want this experience to only run once for each student. Mm -hmm. And then we add it. Now it will be down here. So when training um, training three is right. released, we will then go into who should go. No, all students should go down this path. And then we will click the plus button and we will send an email. Okay. And then, you know, you enter the name of the email. Right. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. and of course you could use the same thing for the two things. And it's like, hi, student. Okay. Right. Right. And when we add that, the email is there, and so that's that's how you create that experience. Okay. So um, dropping the the uh, third um, module or the third training on this, if I have binge mode turned on, will it still not drop right away? Will it still drop on day three? Both will happen. Right. Both so with happen. binge mode. What happens is that your learner can come into the course. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to back out so that we can look at step three here. With binge mode turned on, they will be taken to the homepage. And as soon as they complete your homepage actions and they go into training number one, and let's just say they complete it, they will immediately be offered training number two. Mm hmm and maybe they're so excited, you know, they're, they're like, wow, this is so great. They go all the way through training number two and they do the actions for training number two. They will be immediately offered training number three, right? If they are, if, if for some reason they don't finish training number three or they don't complete all of the actions, they're still in your course. They're still enrolled in the course and mm -hmm. they do not have the tag that the course has been completed, mm -hmm. right? And so if they don't have that tag that the course has been completed, then... Um, uh, these, all of the experiences will still run, right? So okay. even if they go through every, you know, if they go through number one and number two, the experience number two will still run because you have not created an experience that says when they complete experience number two, don't do this one. You know, it, it just gets really, really complicated. Right. And at the end of the day, um, you're still, you're, you know, you're trying to create engagement. So those, those emails will still go out. Okay. So um, when training three for me dropped is because I finished all of the um, actions, but maybe my two test student didn't complete the actions. And that's why training number three didn't drop right, right away for them. It could be. Yeah, it, that it could, could be. be. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank you. Right. No worries. Um, Just want to offer, yeah, Dan, I know I see that you have a question as well. Just want to offer it up for um anybody else who's here. There's a question in the chat. Okay, let's figure out what that is. Christopher, how do you set your course to evergreen? Is Christopher still here? I feel like he left us. No worries. We'll answer his question. Um, the... Every course that you publish on Experienceify, let's see. How, he's, how, he's actually joining. Sorry, Stephen. Oh, okay. Cool. Give here he is. Yeah. Is he? Oh, Christopher's here. Great. Christopher, um, we are just getting to your question in the chat about setting your course to be live or ever and evergreen. Those, so in my mind, those are two different things. A course that is live means that you've published it. And that means that anybody from the public or anybody that you send the link to 
can sign up for the course and take the course. So that's what we mean by going live. Now, depending on what kind of course you've created, will depend on whether or not it is evergreen. For those who are non-native English speakers, when we say evergreen, that means that we uh, the this this term in English means that the course content either doesn't change or very, 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 very rarely changes. And it also means that anyone can start the course at any time and the course will be, will seem like it is, it was built for them. So let's just say I'm looking at Gabrielle in, in the chat right now. Let's just say Gabrielle signs up, signs up for your mini course on Monday. He will go through the course and, you know, day one will happen, day two will happen, day three will happen, all of the experiences will happen. And that's how he will experience it. But if I sign up on Wednesday, or if I sign up two weeks later, I will experience the exact same thing as Gabrielle just two weeks later, right? So I will still get training one, two, three. I will get all the experiences, but they will all up, they will all seem to be built just for me two weeks later. That's what we mean by evergreen. So when you create a course like an expiring mini course or a self-paced course, um, by definition, they are... Uh, they are evergreen because anybody can come and start and take it at any time. And the experience will seem as if it's, oh, hey, this just started for me. They just created this for me. For many of us, for many of the creators in, in our community, they want to have a combination of, it's just like what Daniel described. They want to have a, a combination of things that are evergreen so that they're bringing in leads. They're bringing, you know, you're always generating new people to come into your, your practice uh, or your business. And then usually what you offer is a more VIP or, you know, uh, upper level kind of uh, um, an upselled solution or, or course where it is interactivity, like real time interactivity with you as a coach or you, know, you doing group, group sessions or, you know, uh, like live webinars or something like that. Or maybe you're adding new content on a regular basis, et cetera. And so that's my explanation of the difference between going live, which is just publishing your course so that it's available and then going, you know, keeping something evergreen, which is a self-paced course that anybody can use anytime. And then that individualized experience of um, you know, live sessions or asynchronous sessions or anything like that. Christopher, does that, I, I, does that resonate or did you want to follow up with that at all? Yeah. So that, that's, that's, that sounds great. What if my course is evergreen and you're experiencing some, I think I'm understanding, but I want to, let's say it's evergreen and I want to switch to um, live, meaning something like cohort. I, I understand live it means published. No, we're not talking about published. We're talking about along the lines of cohort or there's a live element, mm -hmm. right? Is there a, how would I convert or switch back and forth from, the, the post is published, how would I switch back and forth from Evergreen and to um, have that live comp component? Is it just by setting the release dates for specific dates? So I'm trying to, I'm trying to, Sure. Let, let, let's say, let's say, mm -hmm. um, and the course is not live. It's the course is gonna happen. Um, uh, next, it's gonna start the first week in, in June, and I guess what would make it not evergreen is by setting the release dates for the pre-recorded content to a specific date. Any more clear. Right. I guess I'm I'm ultimately it sounds a lot like what we discussed in the last office hours of um or what we just talked about with Daniel, um, where you're going to need to have at least two courses and perhaps three courses where you would have um one course which has your evergreen content, like your like basic content or foundation content where when somebody comes in, they will go through those, you know, those trainings. Maybe it's one or two modules or 10 trainings that gives them your basic information. And somewhere in the middle or somewhere, you know, at the end, you say, look, I want to also invite you to partake in the live sessions as well. And the live sessions would be something you would offer as a as a separate course. 
simply because if if you're going to can you know if you're going to add something to to a course over time it by definition again it can't be evergreen because you're changing the content all the time and you're having specific dates and so if i sign up on june 1st and gabrielle signs up on june 15th we have different experiences and so if you want to, any if you want to have something that that is self-paced and that everyone has the same experience you you know you you need to sort of put the content in there and set it and leave it but then if you want to you want to invite them to coaching calls group sessions webinars um uh, you know a, a cohort kind of you know lockstep challenge or something like that um i you know you would need to have a separate course for that okay that that makes sense um what is confusing me i guess you you may have to share your screen when uh on the home page where's that countdown timer to the top of the page is the the, the, the timer sure mm -hmm. When you go to set it, there's live and evergreen. Probably if you can, that, that is what has confused me. And uh, if you can explain um, probably the difference with uh, you go on uh, pages, step four. Sure, yeah, uh, no, I understand what you're saying. And so ultimately here in step four, like I'm looking at the home page. Yeah, and so right. in this template, which is the expiring mini course, we have a timer because the 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 theory the pedagogy behind the expiring mini course is that there is a time limit right and so we want to give them a countdown timer because they only have 72 hours or three days to complete it and that's why the the countdown timer is there however if we go um sorry just moving my zoom tools if we back out of this and go to a different course let's just take you know this demo course here. Uh, and you look at the training content, the training content looks totally different, right? It's just, it's training one through five, blah, 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 blah. And we go into the course pages. <laughs> look at that. There, that you can remove this, um, this countdown timer, right? We, you don't you don't have to have a countdown timer in your course. It's a countdown timer is is something that we recommend to create urgency, but it's not not it's not necessary to have that. So what what I'm thinking with you is I think there's just a little confusion that if I have this countdown timer, how am I going to do my live sessions and how am I going to do my like my webinar sessions and those kinds of things? I would just I would just remove this um you know remove this from the uh, this block from the course. No, 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 no. Right there. Oh, you. When you go and edit content for the countdown timer, I don't know if you have it back there. Um, yeah. And then you set it. When you go to set it, there's live and evergreen. If you can explain the difference between those two. Um, oh, I see. I see what you're saying. I see. Go ahead, Gabriel. Um, <clears throat> the main difference, Christopher, it's uh, for the student. If the st if if your countdown is live. It's uh, between dates, specific dates. So if a student uh, uh, get in into your course in this specific date, it will have only this time to complete the course. But if you set it to evergreen and you set an amount of time, then your student can uh, get in any time and he will have the same time to complete the course. Thank you. I'm so glad that we got there. Christopher, does that make sense? Can you say that again? And if you just do the drop down, you say there's there's live sure. and ever. Can you, can yeah, you sure. Say, so um, I'm going to back out of this. I am, just... it's not, it's not easy. Um, I didn't hear um, Gabriel that that will. No worries. No worries. No worries. We'll just we'll let's review it. So right now we are in our expiring mini course. We're looking at the home page, at the and I have actually I've clicked to edit the content of the header. So when I click on edit the content. We're now looking at we're 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 working on this site uh, this part of the page up here for everybody for the recording. When I click on column number one, you'll see the only thing in there is the countdown timer, and so we have the text that's at the top. We can change that however we want, um, and then we have days, hours, minutes, seconds. That's what the countdown timer shows. And then finally, we're going to click on this update button, 
in order to customize what happens with the countdown timer. When you click on the update button, you have a, a pop-up box that comes up. You will give, um, you have to give the countdown timer a name and then you have to choose, is this going to be alive or evergreen? If it's evergreen, you have to choose how many days will you have for the timer? So when someone comes into your course, how many days do they have to complete it? Is it one day? Is it five days? Is it seven days? You know, do they get one day per training? You know, um, and when we set it to evergreen, that means going back to that original conversation, if Gabrielle starts this course on June 1st, you know, and I put the countdown timer to three, whoops, three, he will have three days to complete it and that, you know, the experiences will run according to those three days. If I, um, sorry, I think we're about to have an earthquake here in Mexico. Um, if I, uh, uh, if I then start the course on June 15th, I will also be given three days and the, 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 the timer will count down from June 15th when I start it. And I will receive those same experiences. So that's what that's how an evergreen timer works. If we change the countdown timer to live, then uh, this would be some like I'm trying to think. Let's just say that you had a special offer that you were going to uh, put out to your community. Um, for example, you're like, look, twice a year, um, you know, I offer, you know, the super golden platinum course that is, only, you know, I only offer it twice, twice a year and you have to complete it by June 30th um, and et cetera, et cetera. That is like maybe one example of how you use a live because you would set this countdown timer to June 30th, you know, at midnight on June 30th, whatever. And the countdown timer would start going to June 30th. And so if I signed up on June 1st, I'd have 30 days. If I signed up on June 15th, I'd have 15 days. If I signed up on June 20th, I'd have 10 days. And so that's that's the difference is that it, it's, it's, it's locked to a, a particular date and time. Um, and that's how you can, you know, what we call, you know, you can do, you can add some pressure, you can add some squeeze to a particular thing. Some urgency is a better word. Uh, you can have, add urgency to an offer so that people come in and they have to do it by a specific time. So that's the difference between live and evergreen in the countdown timing. Yeah, so much. No worries. And you see right there, I, I set it to June 30th. And now there's, you know, anybody who comes in here, you know, right now, if they sign up today, they have 38 days. If they... If they sign up a week from now, they will have 31 days and 16 hours, et cetera. Cool. I'm glad we got there. I I was misunderstanding your question, but thank you very much for articulating that. Fantastic, folks. Anybody else have another question? They want to put? Go ahead, Daniel. So um, if I want to use Experienceify in Spanish and in English, is there a way I can set up the uh, language? Um, from page or or that in in both languages or or yeah. So you'll need to have you'll need to have two courses if you want to have them. Excuse me, in both if you want to have one course in Spanish and one course in English. Um, we don't have we don't offer the ability to have a real time translated course. And what you would do is you would uh, come over, you would come to your um, account page here, and you would click on language, the language menu item. When you click on language, you're able to select the course that you have. So I can select the Evergreen mini course, and then I can change all the labels in the course to their Spanish equivalent or whatever I want them to be. It could be Greek, it could be Arabic, it could be French, right? And so this is where you would change them. And um, everything, and then obviously you would create all the content in Spanish as well. So then you would have, when someone comes into this course, all of the labels, you know, everything, all the menu items, everything would be, you know, in the, the Spanish that you have chosen. And then the content would be in Spanish as well, but you would need to have two courses. Perfect. Thank you. And no just um, if I update the videos from my EMC, um, what will happen? The, the, the previous people that had the the mini course will see the new ones also 
Correct. Okay. When you update, yeah, when you update material like uh, a video. So if you go into course, you'll have to put it in course content, right? So when you update material here, like the video, then if a, a student who's completed that section or has you know completed the course, if they come and log back in, they will see the new material. Okay. And the design for this, uh, is it possible to design for a cell phone? Like for... Um, so by default, uh, Experienceify is what's called responsive. So I'm just going to open up the order page here. Come on. There we go. Preview. Um, and so if I just squeeze my screen here, you can see that it becomes smaller for a mobile experience. Um, and so that's, you know, you can, you can, I would, I recommend actually that you just open up your, you know, your um, one way to test your course is to open it up on your phone or open it up on a tablet and let's see what it looks like because um, it, it should be responsive to your tablet or to your mobile phone. Thank you very much. Very helpful. No worries. No worries at all. Fantastic. Well, folks, if there's, are there any other questions? Just sort of put it out there again, Hannah or Chris. Okay. I will probably have more questions some other time, but I just want to say that I, I just appreciate how clear your team is able to answer the questions and how simple you make it to understand for non-technical people. So I just want to say thank you for that. Our pleasure. That's, you know, that's part of the reason why Murray brought me and Gabrielle and 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 Brenda and um, you know some of the other and Alex who's also here as well, um, because we realize that that is a really big uh, friction, right? That that's a there's a huge amount of friction for for non technical people. They have they have these great ideas. They they want they have stuff they want to teach the world, but getting over the technological hump is one of the big things. And so we're actually, I mean, just a teaser out there. We're working on some different packages and stuff. Uh, which will help even more. They probably won't be released until sort of the summertime, but um, that we're we're recognizing that's a, that's a that's a huge hurdle for a lot of people. So, thank you so much. All right, folks. Well, it's almost nine o'clock here. I'm going to go eat a little bit of breakfast and then go to the office. So, have a great day. Oh, Chris, I didn't see you raise your hand. That that's okay. Um, just adding to um, Altana. I am testing my, another question, just wanna say great job with the team. I'm testing my full course. I set to release the content um, on Tuesday and Thursday. I was amazed to see the thing go from great to live. It's really exciting. And um, I just wanna say thanks so much. Um, this is really exciting and it's, um, I'm, I'm getting there and, and thanks for the support. Great, great job. Fantastic. You That's wonderful. Glad we got you there. Super cool. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Bye-bye.